I'm surprised at this. I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm actually surprised at this. I'm sure some of you guys who are way more intelligent than I am, who have way more insight, who are maybe a little bit more plugged in on the industry will probably be not surprised. But I'm actually legitimately surprised by this news, courtesy of WWD. VF hired Goldman Sachs to consider selling Supreme, sources said. Yes, you heard that correctly. VF Corp is considering selling Supreme. Really? I was like, what? Like, considering, like, the amount of money they paid for it, the the, the fucking growth of Supreme in the last few years, they've, I think they've opened maybe four stores since VF Corp bought them. It's really surprising that they'd want to sell. You'd think Supreme is, like, a very high-value asset. You'd imagine so. Especially considering how long they've been around. Like, well, anyway, whatever. It, I guess not. I guess the business... Because people like this don't just sell because of just for the fun of it they usually sell because the numbers just don't make sense so let's see what the article says the future is coming for supreme financial sources said the luxury streetwear brand is that what this has been referred to as a luxury streetwear brand i, I want it it's just a streetwear brand i don't that's the whole thing i think which makes supreme special and even stussy to a certain extent these are like legacy heritage old school streetwear brands that have just been long enough they've been around long enough they put out enough good work to a high enough level that they can be sold in a skatewear shop, a skate stop, sorry, a skate shop, a streetwear store, menswear store, and a high fashion store. But it doesn't mean they're luxury. They're just really good at what they do. It's at a really high level and people across the board wouldn't wear them. Like you don't call Adidas Sambas luxury, you know, sneakers just because fashion people wear them. So the term luxury streetwear is really weird in my personal opinion. Either it's fashion, either it's streetwear, but luxury streetwear doesn't really exist, in my personal opinion. But again, what do I know? The brand is quietly being shopped around to potential buyers that VF Corp, which bought Supreme for $2.1 billion in 2020, is working with Goldman Sachs to review the portfolio at large. So, you know, most likely they are going to get a profit on their fucking purchase, right? If they bought the company for $2.1 billion, they're probably going to get more than that if they sell it now in 2024 and onwards, for sure, right? You'd imagine so. While VF Corp has been public about its desire to spin off parts of its business, it has not disclosed that it's working with Goldman or Supreme, which was one of the biggest tagged sales. A spokesperson for VF said, as a matter of policy, we do not comment on markets, rumors or speculation. A spokesperson from Goldman Sachs declined to comment. Supreme has been something of a fascination for fashion and for the uh, deal makers who watched a private equity giant Carlyle invested in the business at 1 billion at valuation in 2017 and then doubled its money with the VF deal. Oh yeah, true. Both of these sales pr prompted questions about how the ultra buzzy and quirky Supreme with its set the agenda in streetwear, luxury streetwear, sorry, would fare under corporate ownership. The business has grown, but its light has faded somewhat. The brand got too big to continue to be cool said that it's one investment banker. It didn't help that under VF, Supreme ran into some supply chain problems in 2022, a surprising turn of events given the strength of VF traditionally showed in that area. So supply chain issues and the fact that they're waning as a brand. I don't think that's, that's the thing. That's, maybe I'm viewing it as like a fanboy, but I don't think v, Supreme has really waned. If anything, they just put out too much product. I don't think there's enough exclusivity around Supreme anymore. Obviously the high ticket, high value things still sell out for the most part. But I think because of the amount of stores they have, because of the amount of money they've invested into their online store, into e-commerce, they just have to make more quantities to fulfill those kind of spots. Not even maybe supply, just to fill those kind of retail outlets and shit. That's basically it. And I think that's kind of watered down the brand because part of the reason why the brand was always great was because they made great stuff. And it also sold out quickly so that you have the ability to buy it because they made quite a lot of it because they had big stores in most of the big locations. But you wouldn't have the danger of having everybody wearing the same shit you wore because if it was something that was in demand, more than likely it would sell out in that day or in that week. So that would kind of take it out. But nowadays, especially with the prevalence of like online resellers, nothing really sells out, really, technically. If you want something, you can buy it. Like the Futura Dunks that just came out now. I missed them because I'm not on fucking sneaker as I should be. I don't have my alerts on and I turn off notification like an idiot. But I missed the, the, the Futura um, Dunk SBs, right? The, the ones that just came out recently. You just go on fucking StockX and they're 350 pounds. I just saw the other day. Maybe the price has gone up now. But if you want a pair of shoes, they're desperately enough. You can buy them. As long as you're willing to pay like double you can buy them. So the idea of limited edition doesn't really exist anymore because there's so many people out there buying shit to resell. There's so many people out there buying shit to be cool 
there's so much people supplying that shit that it almost takes away the limited edition thing. To be limited edition now, you have to literally do what Cortez does and other brands where you have like flash drops and then you fucking close the store and no one can buy it anymore. You know what I mean? And you also make smaller quantities. That is the only way to do it. If you're operating at like a supreme level, it's almost impossible to be limited because how are you limited when you have stores, when you have like four stores in Southeast Asia, right? Like how many stores do they actually have? It's, it's pretty, it's a lot. Like at the moment, last time I checked, it's, it's not a small amount. They have a large amount of stores. So can you really be limited edition if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 stores, 17. And of those 17, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in Southeast Asia. How's that? Go How are you going to be limited? Eight in Southeast Asia. That's not, that's not limited all in the sides, is it? In my personal opinion. But again, what? and, and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, aren't they going to open a second one in Italy? I heard the rumor that they've got one in Milan. There's going to be a second one in Italy. I'm not sure where, but it's going to be a second one in Italy. So that's fucking, that's a lot of fucking stores. But again, I still think Cache, cool level, they're still there. You see someone you don't know with a Supreme hat on, you still think they're a bit cool. I don't think you look at them like they're a dork. I think now that if you see somebody in the Bape Shark hoodie, it's a bit lame. Like, you know, you see them in a billionaire boys club jumper, a bit lame. But I think if you see a kid now wearing a Supreme hat or like a guy, like an adult, wearing like a Supreme trench coat or a Supreme backpack, you're like, oh shit, that guy knows what's up. Do you know what I mean? You don't look at it as lame. I don't think so anyway. Maybe I could be in the wrong and I'm in denial, but I don't think that's the case. So I think they should be okay to ride that storm. In fiscal 2023, VF talks 750 million in charges against the goodwill and indefinite lived trademark of Supreme, tied to higher interest rates and foreign currency fluctuations. As those charges were logged, VF Now's outgoing chief financial officer, Matthew Puckett, acknowledged that Supreme's business was uneven that year. Ugh. Okay, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am waffling. The chief financial officer of VF, the people that actually have the money they actually have the sales in front of them. They actually have the accounting in front of them every day. They're doing the fucking V lookups and pivot tables and shit. He said the word uneven. Oof. Okay. But things have perked up since then, and Pocket had a more bullish update on the brand in October, reporting double digit growth. Okay. So he went from uneven to double digit growth. He said the August opening of the August opening of Supreme's new store in Seoul in Korea is off to a terrific start and has delivered impressive results across a number of metrics. A strong proof point on the roadmap of our grow word grow wide strategy, which is aimed to expanding access to the brand to consumer glo Oh, so they did. This is actually an, an expansion plan. See, that's the issue about ex accepting investment. When you accept investment from these big investment, you know, fucking brands or whatever yeah investment firms when they put money into your company you can't then dictate terms they dictate terms so if they give you 2.1 billion and they say we want to have 10 stores in southeast asia by the end of 2024 you have 10 stores you can't argue you can't debate you can't push back they just gave you 2.1 billion like they are your bosses now essentially um which obviously is hard to kind of manage but you know, because with rapid growth comes rapid decline because how are you going to sustain that over a period? Especially nowadays, I think people don't really, people kind of underestimate how much those like smaller, what I'd like to call like, you know, Instagram brands have done to Supreme. Like the likes of like Hellstar and shit. Those type of brands, even Cortez in the UK. I think those type of brands have taken a, a bit of a, a, a chunk out of their potential sort of like market share. And a lot of the kids that would buy Supreme are now more prone to support a Hellstar because they follow the founder and he's cool and he shares pictures of behind the scenes and he's sharing motivational things like he said or he's saying motivational things that like the Cortez guy says. So you feel a little bit more of a personal connection to it. You see the the brand grow from making side bags and t-shirts to now making fucking full waterproof zip ups and shit. So you want to support the journey. So I think kids nowadays are probably more prone to support the journey of that or make their own brand than they are to support Supreme, especially now that it's become like a global phenomenon, a global phenom. Um, it continues. Most recently, he said the brand has seen a positive momentum. 
Um, there have been other setbacks along the way, they said. The brand hired Tremaine Emery as creative director, only to see him leave in August over what he described as systemic racial issues at the brand. The brand dis disagreed with the characterization at the time. Founder James Jabier still runs Supreme and remains a well-respected in the industry, but has had to navigate some pretty choppy waters at VF, where the brand has been part of a much large target picture. The fact that they mentioned Tremaine in this is interesting. So the craziness with Tremaine might have painted Supreme in a bad light in how they run as a business, day-to-day, office-wise. Which makes sense, because I think one of the positive, or one of the, I think, truthful observations from um, Tremaine and that whole Supreme thing, what he said was, like, the culture around, like, the C-suite of the people in there, where they were kind of clicky, they all kind of sucked up to fucking James Jebbia, no one really challenged ideas or brought fresh ideas to the table. Um, um, James kind of, like, maybe micromanaged a bit too much and didn't maybe leave people to do their own thing, which is understandable, too, how he micromanages, because basically his micromanaging has is what has led to Supreme being, you know, has has led to them having an investment of, what, 2.1 billion. That's why, because he fucking cares, right? He was there when the store first opened, sweeping his floors, and now he's still there paying attention to the details, you know, in his old age, even though he doesn't need to, and he has more than enough people to do it. The fact that he has that hands-on approach is what makes Supreme great. But obviously, if you're going to hire a creative director, you have to give them space to do their shit, even if it's wrong. Even if you don't like the idea of them fucking having, you know, images of slaves whipped on the fucking t-shirt and shit, that's all against what you're about. You have to give them the opportunity to fail basically and maybe he didn't give them pe the people space and maybe the culture around it doesn't you know because you can imagine too vf Corp probably don't even i didn't again this is just from the ob observation of knowing how companies are and how, what, how the culture changes in the company when an investment firm comes in and buys it out or buys a portion of it you see the culture change or you get absorbed it's happened to me once i wouldn't be surprised if vf corp also put some pressure on supreme in who they hired or who they even fired so maybe the whole creative director role came about because of VF Corp. Maybe Tremaine got hired because VF Corp wanted to paint Supreme as this like diverse thing, give it another sort of message out front. Now I mean that he could have he could have actually been a, a diversity hire as Kanye kind of like laughed at him about, but that could actually be the reason why, which also might explain why it didn't work out because he was seen as a bit of an op. He was sort of seen like a bit of a spy in a way. Hey, you're VF Corp guy we didn't really want you i mean that it could that could be part of the whole weird conspiracy of what went on around there but shoot the fact that they mentioned it obviously is proof that something it went on there um it continues vf has annual sales um that approach 11 billion owns footwear centric brand vans timberland ultra performance apparel smart wool icebreaker outdoor brands the north face and another one called Napa Jiri and workwear named Dickie. Oh, but Napa Jiri, I remember them. They're the ones that did a collaboration with Martin Rose, isn't it? They kind of fall. I feel like they kind of fell off a bit, but they were doing some really hard stuff. Napa Jiri. Um, the company's backpack business, including Kepling, Eastpack, and Jansport, is in the midst of a sale um, process already. It's not clear how many of the brands VF Corp is looking to ultimately sell, but the portfolio has been under microscope for some time. Activist investor. Uh, um, engaged capital pushed for the company last year to consider selling all of its brands except for the large but struggling vans and the company traditional powerhouse North Face. Wow. So vans and North Face are way more financially stable than Supreme is. I would never have thought that. I'm not going to lie. I know obviously vans is a legacy brand cool, but I would never have thought North Face, but it makes sense though because whenever I pass the North Face in Westfield Stratford, bro, it's always booming. There's people in there shopping. Like pe People be having money. And North Face jacket, I'm not sure about you guys, but if you try to buy like a Fugazi North Face jacket, the difference between that and an actual legit one from the store is night and day. So I think a lot of people are like, you know what, I'd rather save my money and buy a free 50 Noopsy from North Face store than buy like a 50 pound one from some Chinese factory somewhere that's going to come looking like a fucking piece of paper and then I have to fluff it up in the washing machine with a tennis ball and all that malarkey. Do you know what I mean? So I see a lot of people actually buying legit things from there like sh even t-shirts i hear a lot of people love the shorts in supreme sorry north face so interesting isn't it interesting because you'd think if you're v if the business was good vf corp would keep a hold of the big brands right and supreme would be one of them you'd let go of all the brands that aren't really 
contributing to your bottom line and get rid of the rest. But it seems Supreme aren't doing that well. It continues. For years, VF Corp has made a portfolio play in fashion and has more active than most, uh, spinning off brands that no longer fit the vision and buying up new properties. But something different is going on this time. After years of go go growth from vans, the brand has lost its edge and it started to rely too much on classic looks and headed into a protracted downturn. They hit just as the company faced a 875 million tax bill tied to a 2011 acquisition of Timberland as a debt accumulated in the Supreme deal weighed on its balance sheet. Sometimes this money you see on business articles is just crazy. Can you fathom? Can you fathom the day that you would check your fucking current account, your check-ins account, and see the amount of 875 million? Could you imagine what you would do with that sort of money? <laughs> like, these guys just cure companies, have that debt, riot off, or it's just there in the background. Like, could you imagine what you could do with $875 million? God damn. God damn. God damn. The first thing I do is go to that fucking, that, that fucking strip club in fucking Shoreditch, that whorehouse. If you know what I mean. If you've been around, you know. The first thing I do is fucking divorce the wife, abandon the kids, and go to that whorehouse in Shoreditch across the road from the Tesco. Yeah, you know I mean, I'll just say, hey, here's here's a meal. Run my tab. Anyway, altogether, it is too much for VF, and the company's share price plummeted over a hundred dollars at the start of 2020. Um, and Tuesday, when it took a stock clean of 0.3 percent, um, Steve Rendell, president and chairman and chief executive officer, left abruptly in 2022 and was replaced by last year by a person called Logitech International CEO Bracken Darrell, who is looking at the business with new eyes. Uh, Darrell has been focused on the future, but when pressed by WWD in an interview in February, he said that the prior engagement ran their play well, buying brands that could benefit from the company's mocked, sorry, uh, rock solid supply chain. And then he said VF poor lost the plot a bit. It must be fun to be a CEO in it. I always thought I would want to be more of a creative director, but a creative director is a good role, but it's just a bit of a cool job role, a cool guy role. Obviously, you know, overseeing the brand vision and design and strategy and all this sort of shit from a creative kind of point of view is cool. And seeing how that can kind of contribute to the long-term success of the company or short-term is cool. But I think being a CEO and applying your business acumen to different types of companies, different type of brands, different types of markets, different types of customers in different times of the year, different, you know, periods of their business, ups or downturns. That must be so fun, so exhilarating. Whether you fall flat on your face or whether you be or whether you turn it around, it must be so rewarding to go to because you know you have to make the hard decisions. You have to hire and you have to fire and hire. Um, you have to fucking re-strategize you have to fucking lock in it it just requires so much you know thinking overview of having every you basically have to have knowledge of every part of the business at least surface level you have to kind of know what's going on in sales ops this that import export boom 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 and then that kind of informs what you kind of do in terms of the business overall and you have to make some hard decisions you cut that team by 50 you fire everybody here you rehire there you have it's almost like a you know, it's almost like you're making a movie in real time. Like, it's fucking wild. It must be so fun, but such a hard job to do. But if you do do it, your CV is nuts. Like, you go from like, oh, yeah, head of, you know, head of Samsung, CEO at Samsung, CEO at this place, that place, this place. Like, so much range and breadth in terms of your experience. Like, people will be looking at you thinking, rah, this guy is the guy, isn't it? This guy is the motherfucking guy. Look at the work that he's done in all these different places. Like, they might look at you like, whoa. So yeah, like I like I like the CEO role, man. It sounds fucking smart. It sounds fucking smart. Let's move on. Let's move on. So we did that. We've spoken about a little bit of Supreme and how they're trying to move things around and how things are going to change. If they're gonna change, if they're not going to change, and we hope that is the case going forward, we really do.